Welcome to this video on deploying the Langardian Virtual Appliance. My name is Dara Delaney, I'm Head of Technical Services here at Netforge. In this video I'm going to show you how you can set up Langardian on a VMware ESX server and connect it to your core switch so that you can monitor traffic from your physical network. Quick word first and some of the requirements. So as I say we're going to look at the ESX hypervisor platform. We support versions 3.5 upwards and we're going to connect it so that you can monitor your core switch. One of the main requirements we have is that you must have a dedicated network card on your ESX server for monitoring. So this will be assigned to the Langardian appliance. Once you've identified and assigned a network card, you can then move on and download the software. A free version of our software is available on netfort.com. If you click to the download section, there's three options there. And the one you're interested in is the middle one, which is the Langardian VMware appliance. It's a pre-built appliance, very easy to deploy on your network. Once you've downloaded that appliance, save it on your desktop. And then let's move on to the next step, which is deploying the appliance on your ESX server. Okay, I'm now logged on to my ESX server using this vSphere client. So I select a server where I want to deploy the Langardian 2. From the file option here, choose to deploy an OVF template. Just browse to where you've downloaded the file from our website. So here it is, Langardian 10.1. Click on Next. Give it a name. So I'm going to leave it as Langardian 10.1. You can change some of the disk options here. I'll just leave it as standard. And just click on finish. So that virtual machine is now being deployed. And once this completes, we then need to configure some of the settings on the Langardian. Main settings we need to look at is give it an IP address, default gateway and set to DNS server. So this here just takes a, should be deployed in less than a minute. Okay so it's been successfully deployed. Next thing we need to do then is click on the virtual machine here and before you power it on you can right click on it here um, you might want to take a look at the settings of it. For example, if you can, you might need to allocate more memory. We certainly recommend uh, increasing the memory, maybe up to four gigabytes if, if you have that available. Um, probably the main thing to look at there. And also if you can add more CPUs, there's just one included here, um, but certainly recommend more memory. I'm going to leave it as default for this video. So we either right click and power it on, I'm going to select the little option at the top here. And then we we'll go over here to console. Now this screen here on the console, it will take a couple of minutes um, while it goes through the boot up process. Um, you know it's complete when you're presented with a menu. So as I said, you do need to leave this running for a few minutes. Uh, it's going to come up with some, a lot of status updates. But what you're waiting for is a menu screen where you can uh, change some of the settings. Okay, the boot process is now completed on the Langardian. So on the console here, we just press the enter key and we can change some of the settings. Now the one to choose here is option six to configure network device. And we give it an IP address. Now I'm gonna leave it at uh, 192.168.127.200, set a mask, default gateway, DNS server, I'm gonna change that. And then we're back at the main menu. So that's pretty much it um, from a console. We've given it an IP address, we've set it up. Now next what we want to do is uh, complete the installation of Langardian through its web front end. So let's move on to that. So to complete the installation or configuration of Langardian, uh, load up your whatever browser you use. We recommend using the latest version. I use Firefox here, so HTTPS to the IP address. And you introduce here to the Langardian configuration wizard. 
So we agree with the LISIG terms, you can enable or disable the feedback option. Again, we have the opportunity here to check or maybe change the uh, network settings. I'm going to leave them as they are. Next up, um, it asks for uh, proxy server settings. So if you use proxy server, recommend that you fill this in. The reason it needs proxy server settings is so it can download updates from the internet. So for example, intrusion detection signatures, that type of thing. Um, if you want to get alerts and emails from the system, here's the place where you can set up the uh, email addresses. You can always configure this again later on. So that's what I'm going to do. Just leave the defaults there. The next option is the setting the time on the system. This is very important. Um, system needs to have the correct time. So when data is logged, um, it's 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 logged with the correct timestamp. Uh, I'm going to choose the option here to synchronize with a network time protocol server. Just move on. The next uh, option then is to set a password. So this is the uh, GUI password for the administrator account. Um, needs at least seven characters. So try and do something fairly complex. Now, if you ever uh, lose this password, there is an option as well through the uh, console on the LAN Guardian. So back a couple of screens where we set the IP address, there's an option in there as well to change the password for the administrator account if you ever get stuck. Next up, we set the Active Directory integration options. Um, if you have Active Directory on your network, um, it's recommended that you set this up so when you run reports, uh, you get to see usernames, not just IP addresses. Now it needs um, access to Active Directory. That information on that is contained within the LangGuardian user manual. You could set up an account or maybe use an existing service account. So I'm not going to set it up right now. Um, again, you can set it up again, but for most of you out there, I recommend setting it up at this point. On the last screen, then it shows the sensor status. Um, now I'm not really monitoring anything yet, so I'm not going to see much here. It tells me of one sensor. Um, the link is up, but it's not getting any span traffic yet. Now we're going to revisit this in a couple of minutes. Just click on finish and then log on. So that's the LangGuardian installed. The next part, what we want to take a look at is how we can link the LangGuardian back to the core switch so we can monitor the physical network, what's happening at the network core. So let's move on and take a look at that. So let's set up monitoring in our virtual environment. So I'm on my vSphere client here and I connect it to the server which hosts LangGuardian. Under configuration here, you select networking. Now this displays the virtual network infrastructure. So this, at the moment there's a single virtual switch. Now to enable monitoring on this switch, we just click on properties, click the switch, click edit, go to security, and from the drop down here in promiscuous mode, change it to accept. Promiscuous, promiscuous mode allows us to monitor traffic that's passing through that virtual switch. Now to bridge the connection between the physical world and this virtual world, we need to add an additional switch. To do that, click add networking, select the first option, virtual machine, and create a standard switch here. So on my system, because I have only two network cards, it's defaulting um, to add the second network card to the switch. Now, if you have multiple network cards available, make sure you select the one that's connected back to your core switch or whatever switch you want to monitor. So in my case, this is fine. Click next. And we give it a name. So call it um, LangGuardian Virtual Switch. You don't need to change the VLAN option. Just click next and then finish. So that now acts as a bridge between the physical and the virtual networks. Last thing to do is just click Properties, click Edit Switch, Security, and change the promiscuous mode here as well. Now the next step involves adding an additional sensor to LangGuardian. So we select LangGuardian here, right click, and then Edit Settings. Click on Add. So what we want to do is add an additional network adapter. Select the Ethernet adapter here, then click Next. 
Adapter type leave as the standard E1000, but in the under network connection, make sure you select your new virtual switch. So in my case, Langardian virtual switch, click next and finish. Just okay that. So we now have added the new network adapter to Langardian. Now we do need to reboot it now. So log on to your Langardian, go to the gear symbol top right, select shutdown reboot. And what we want to do here is restart the system. So apply to that. Now back on the vSphere client and look at the console here, you should start to see the Langardian go into its reboot um, procedure. So you'll, you'll start to see it shut down and it'll reboot again. It will take a couple of minutes. So here we go, it's starting to reboot. So while that system is rebooting, I'm going to configure my core switch. To do that, I'm going to tell it to the switch because I've got a Cisco switch here. So just tell it to the IP address. Now, if you use Cisco, you can use the exact same commands that I'm going to use today. If you use another brand, maybe like HP or Extreme or um, Dell switch, just refer to your switch manual. You're looking for mirror port or span port setup. Some do via web GUI, some do, do via uh, CLI. All the Cisco stuff, it's easy, it's done via CLI. So I log on, go, firstly go into enable mode, and then go into configuration mode. The commands to set up monitoring is monitor session, and you can choose either monitor session one or monitor session two. Cisco gives you the option then to monitor VLANs, and that can be very useful because if you're monitoring servers, you could just monitor the server VLAN. Uh, if you have a flat network, there's just one VLAN, you could just monitor the default VLAN, which is usually number one. So monitor session one, source, VLAN, and I'm going to choose uh, number one. Now, most network switch or Cisco switches, you can just press return at this stage. Um, I've got a Cisco 3550 here. It's a little bit unique in that you have to type RX at the end. For most switches, you do not need to do that. Then you issue a similar command again, monitor session one, but this time you put in destination, interface, and the one, the interface where you plugged the ESX server into the switch. So in my case, I've on zero slash two, and that's it done. Last thing here is just to write that to memory so we don't lose the configuration. So that's the switch configured. Let's go back now to our Langardian, which is booting up at the moment. Okay, so my Langardian has rebooted. I can see the logon prompt back here. So I log on to it again. Let's log on as administrator. And what we want to do now is we want to add an additional sensor here. So we click the gear symbol, go to sensors. On this page, then we've current sensors. We've sensor one, which is monitoring the virtual switch, the, the one that was already there. And sensor two is a PCAP sensor. So I'm going to add a third, just click the add sensor. Select local is fine. Now it's automatically detected here an unused network card. So that's fine, we'll use that. And we can give it a name. So I'm gonna call it core switch sensor. You don't need to change anything else here. All the defaults are fine. Just click save. And we're done, we're up and running here. We've got a new s sensor in place. Now what you need to do at this point is leave it a couple of minutes to start to gather data. Um, you should start to see bandwidth levels here and also it will detect that there's span traffic present. Once you've got it running a while, you can go to reports and just check that you're getting data. So for example, from reports, I've just picked here top websites. I'm going to run this report and just take a look at what's happening. So I can look at the last couple of hours, run this. Now what I'm looking out for here is any activity associated with the core switch sensor. And there is, so you can see here somebody in hp.com. So that tells me everything's working fine. I'm getting traffic through from the core switch. It's the virtual environment and it's been processed by my virtual LAN guardian. So that's it. My LAN guardian is now up and running and deployed inside my virtual environment. 
If you're looking for any more information about the Network Land Guardian, maybe manuals, documentation, further instructions on how to get the product installed, please visit our website at www.netfort.com. Alternatively, you can also email us at support at netfort.com. Thank you.